There's no other empty seats. No, you're good, dude. You got a pack. Does it pack so the job? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh my god, is it wrong on here? <laughs> yeah. What does it say? I first saw that. 421? <laughs> Hold on. Quick, oh, quick patch, hot patches. <laughs> we have a bug that we are fixing live in production. I'm totally open. I could have gone next week. Yeah. I'm going to be in a Oh, it's so hard to do these things. Back off. There we go. Yeah. Boom. Hot fixed in production. Oh. Um, well, it's right over here. Um, but well, when I filled out this form, because somebody was like, Josh, can you please fill out this form? Like, you can tell me about it. Write that email. Like, they were a lot of Right, but like, some context was Josh. But yeah, I don't like Twitter. Yeah, I'm good at some things and bad at other things. Proofreading. For example. No, like grammar, that's that's why I fell in love with grammar really this past week. Yeah. Yeah. There are some uh, layouts of like screenshots in here. Comparisons that I think that um, I apologize to anybody with a sense of design. Uh, are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is not what I do. I'm excited about Gutenberg in terms of like I can write code that makes designs happen. I don't have to make the designs. I'm getting ahead of myself by three slides. Okay, um, do we get the door? Is it time? Yeah. Should we do the door? Or? Yeah, it's right there. Um, okay, we'll get started. Hi. Hi. Do Hi. I need to do anything for the streaming or am I on? Do I need the mic? No, no mics. Okay. On the camera. Cool. Um, so we'll get started. Thank you all for coming. This is a great program. Um, I'm Josh Pollock. I'm the, uh, we developer for Caldera Labs. We make Caldera forms. You can find me on the internet at Josh412. Um, you can get the slides for this at uh, this URL here. Um, it'll just redirect you to the Google slides. And that's important because there's a lot of links. And if you come up and touch the screen during the talk, it's not going to work. Um, but there's a lot of really useful links for, that you can have and go to. So you download the slides there. And also, um, you can, in Google Slides, you can do make a copy and make this your own. Um, and this is uh, essentially forked from Brian Richards' uh, from WP Sessions talk that uh, from the WordCamp Miami uh, workshop that we did together about three weeks ago. Um, and I encourage you to kind of do, do your own as you learn about Gutenberg, because we in this community now, people who go to WordCamps, segment of the WordPress user uh, community, have a need to teach other people now what Gutenberg is and why this is a benefit and how to use it. Um, so what is Gutenberg itself? Uh, this is, I copied the first like phrase on Gutenberg page. A new publishing experience for WordPress. <laughs> I'm a developer, like I need a more specific requirement <laughs> because this is a technical talk. <laughs> Like, and and I, I used it yesterday to work on, and last night to work on some content that I want to publish. And it was a different experience. Um, but what we're talking about here is code, like PHP and JavaScript code. And so we can say that this is a WordPress UI framework. And I'm going to use the term framework relatively ambiguously because Gutenberg is a lot of things. And... Uh, we can just kind of lump them together. We'll kind of get more into that door. You won't leave here with its things. Um, but this whole system, let's just say it's a UI framework for building user interfaces in WordPress. For example, the post editor in WordPress 5.0 will default to Gutenberg. You'll also be able to switch it over to Classic, which is what we have now. It becomes called Classic. But in WordPress 5.0, that is the focus feature of WordPress 5.0. WordPress 5.0 will be released when Gutenberg is, meets the requirements of this new post editor. Right now, it's under development. There are some things that need to be finished, but that's WordPress 5. And then in the future, other Gutenberg-powered features will exist in WordPress. There's a lot of opportunities to reuse this for sidebars, for widgets, for menus, 
plugins that you use it. Um, so this is a system that is being used for the WordPress post editor and then other things. And I'm not, it's not like I'm not in on the secrets, right? This just isn't, it's a very public, here are some ideas about where to go next. Um, I'm hoping this is gonna work. Uh, I'm working on this uh, set of uh, tutorials on advanced object-oriented PHP for Torque, um, partnering with Tanya uh, from Know the Code, and so we've been doing a lot on Twitter uh, about it, to promote it. And I wanted to try and put together um, with different embeds in Gutenberg, you know, the tweet here, I'm not done with this, but, you know, a little bit of text here, the tweet here, some more about what we're talking about, the, you know, the WordPress embed of content on Tanya's site about the same concept. So, you know, and then that's a loop comp video. So this is just a quick screen recording of my progress in putting this together. Um, that I wanted to show, I don't get the wrong button, because we need to know this idea of everything is a block in Gutenberg. What does that mean? Um, and it would be really nice if I could get it to play. Can I get you to shift a little more right so we can get you in frame with yes. the slides? Yeah, maybe it's currently cut off a little bit. There we go. There we go, now I can see both. So this is, as you can see, this paragraph has now become a block here. Right, and I'm adjusting its controls over here, what we call the inspector controls for the block. Um, and this is, these are all settings, you know, I'm adding that little drop case and the colors <coughs> that apply just to this block. And this is inside of the new multi-column blocks, which are a feature under development that I recommend everybody use and they go to GitHub and explain, politely explain parts about it could be better because it's under development. Um, but I just dropped in this image box here, you know, block, and added something out of the media library. And you can see here that I'm kind of doing this back and forth multi-columns. This is default Gutenberg, no page builder. Um, you know, okay, cool, Tanya's gonna help out. Here's her tweet. And then here's the, you know, why I think that's good. Go back to full width content. Here's a related video from LoopConf that, you know, that's on their YouTube about code review. So this is about collaboration, and you could open up and see that it's HTML. We'll talk about this in a bit. Um, but see that that's the YouTube embed link right there. Um, just like currently, we just drop it into the post content and it works. Same basic idea. Um, but the preview comes up immediately. Um, and then we go back to that. And these little ones here are actually pre-format um, blocks, but I'm able to turn them into um, uh, you know, into paragraphs in back so the blocks can change what kind of block they are. As I go, I can turn it into a quote, right? So I'm taking this part of it, and then James, this is the joke we were just talking about, I'm like attributing it to me, like this whole thing, like it's a quote, Josh Pollock, my qualification is I'm about to give the talk about code. Um, which is a dumb joke that like Roy and I have been making forever. Um, but I'm able to do this kind of formatting stuff in take on the design that Gutenberg is. Uh, have multi-columns all of a sudden, I don't know how this is gonna work out, but you know, I'm going to the right here all of a sudden. You know, this is gonna be a CSS problem. But, you know, and at the bottom I'm going to, what did I do? I think I put a button here. Right, I wanna add a like, learn more about this course. Kind of call out. Um, so I think I eventually found the button. There's a lot of different blocks that exist here we can search through. Um, yeah, there it is. I found the button. I put it in the total wrong place. It's supposed to go at the bottom. Uh, but we'll solve that in a second. So click here to learn more. Kind of call to action. Um, change the colors here. There's like a link inserter down there, but okay, now I got it to the right place and it can be centered. It's going to try and tell me, you know, use one of your own posts. Here, just based on what I'm tech, you know, that's basically how it works now. It's a little bit of a cleaner interface. Um, you know, this is all stuff that's now going to be the standard for WordPress. Um, and these are all concepts of everything is a block, 
is that the paragraph becomes a block. You know, you hit enter and you're in another paragraph. You hit delete, you're out of that block. But you're moving things around where everything is modular and everything can have certain roles to it because each thing is a defined piece of the program, right? A paragraph block is functionally the same thing as we used to just put paragraphs in the text editor, right? And our themes figured out how to make it look like it and we auto added this p text. Now we're having a thing called a paragraph and we can, it's a, par, it's a block type of paragraph and we can make new versions of it. We can make versions that, you know, add a pre-formatted tag around it. Versions that are only capable of having a certain font face because that's how this system works. Um, and this talk is about how to build those blocks. Um, if I can get this to navigate. Well, we're just going to stay on this slide all day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if we do this? So that was kind of how it works. That was a really quick demo of these are all blocks. They can turn into other things. They have their own settings. They have that panel on the side. What we're covering today is how do you register your own block type? Okay, th that was the text block. block. But you want the block for your custom events plugin, you know, that you've developed for your organization. It, or, you know, instead of having this like Google Doc that says every time you talk about an event, use an H2 tag and a title case, and then have a paragraph, and then have an image with a right align, you can just have a, re a reusable block or pre develop your own one. That's how we're going to talk about how do you make that a thing. Um, we're going to talk about three basic JavaScript functions that you're going to use for all of these. Um, how to make a basic static block, one that just kind of puts content there. You, know, you put it there, and now there's a thing. Um, and then editable static blocks, the kind of block that saves some HTML to post content, but also has an interface so we can change what that HTML is. And so that's kind of like the, um, the YouTube embed block that I showed. It would be a static block that's editable. So, once you save it, the only way it can change is somebody going in and changing what it is. Opposed to say, latest posts is going to look different every time because the, you know, there's new posts. That one that's this specific YouTube embed is an example of an editable static block. Um, and I have a ton of links on how to learn more because you're not going to learn all this stuff today and I'm not going to cover everything you need to know. Um, so, as I said, this is based off of some a uh, presentation that Brian Richards gave at WordCamp Miami, um, which was a whole uh, all-day workshop that Greg from Automatic, Zach Gordon, um, Brian and I did. Um, and so all the code from that is these two GitHub repos. And um, we're going to actually be playing mainly in this first one today. Um, but if you are used to JavaScript and you are looking for you know, a modern approach with ES6 and such, um, you're going to want to look at the bottom one. And if you are new to JavaScript uh, and you're looking for some very beginner hello world stuff, the top one is probably more helpful. We're going to stick mainly to the top one today. Um, but this WordCamp Miami workshop um, was like all day, so it was longer and we did more. Uh, there's slides from everybody there. Greg, one of the developers from Automatic, has a slide deck that you can just kind of look at and get a lot of value out of. That explains why Gutenberg, what the general direction is, and what why these decisions were made. Right? I'm speaking from somebody who's developed with this, written educational materials for this, developed with it, but I'm not a uh, developer of it. Uh, and Greg can speak with that, you know, as a part of the project. And his slides are a really good overview. Um, there's more example code. Um, Gutenberg Times is a website that has a lot of Gutenberg um, content. And uh, that's their um, summary of that event that's really good. It has all the information and highlights and stuff. Um, so this is a developer-facing talk. I'm going to assume you know some PHP and JavaScript. We're not super advanced stuff here, but everybody's welcome to be here. Um, but, you know, that's who we're, uh, this talk is designed for. Um, and if you're looking for something that is for users, uh, people who want to use this interface, 
Um, again, at WordCamp Miami, Give did a lot of, uh, they had Matt gave a talk and they created some other resources, so that's kind of the roundup there for them uh, that I really recommend everybody take a look at. Uh, really good stuff to understand what Gutenberg is. Um, introduction to Gutenberg, um, Joe's course, uh, is designed for users to understand how to use Gutenberg. Um, if that's the thing you're looking for, that's a video course. And then uh, Nathan, who's here, uh, has uh, iThemes training, uh, getting ready for Gutenberg. Um, and iThemes training always does great stuff. Um, and so that's awesome that they got Gutenberg stuff. So, no, I had to just do good stuff. Uh, that's a good site. And um, so those are good things to show if you're looking for other people who you speak with or just looking for, I need the basics, I need the what, the how. Uh, those are good resources. So, let's talk about how to make your block happen, how to register it with WordPress, and make sure that the CSS, the JavaScript files, show up. Um, what we're going to create here is a PHP file that goes in a plugin um, that you know calls the WP well WP register script register block. Type. We'll get to that in a second. The JavaScript file that does the rest of the block basically. Um, and then we can have the CSS file for the front end styles for the admin styles. Um, so when you go to that example code plugin, it has four blocks break it broken out in it. Um, but this is the structure of one of them. This is the static block. So this is a PHP file that we'll look at next at the bottom here. Um, ooh, lasers. And um, <laughs> but that's what we're we're gonna use like we're gonna use some PHP code to tell WordPress, hey, this is a block. This is what it is. Um, but most of what when we define the block, we're gonna be in block.js. Um, and then these are CSS style sheets. And that's the basic structure of a block. How you get there, if you want to use SCSS, you want to use JSX, you want to use a complicated build tooling system, you want to use Grunt. Right? I mean, I still use Grunt because I've got a lot of like legacy stuff, but like, I've lost tipster cred in the room um, <laughs> for admitting to it. Like, I have, I have like Webpack runners that run Grunt tests. Like, um, so however you get to this, um, I have a lot of opinions on, but however you implement that's up to you. Let's start very simple. <coughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use WP register script. Um, if you've ever developed for WordPress before, this is not a new thing. This is where you make WordPress known that there's a JavaScript file it can load. It has this handle, it's located at this URL, it has these dependencies. Um, WP register style, same thing, but for a style sheet. Um, and then register block type is this new function. And one of the things that it does is associate those handles that we registered with parts of the block. So let's start looking at that. Um, but notice that we're not calling in queue scripts or in queue styles. Gutenberg will figure that out for us. We're just going to register it. Um, so this is the registration function. Uh, for the first one of those blocks in the example block. Um, the first line is WP register script here, right? This is just hooked in at init. There. So standard WordPress plugin. I think this is the only PHP slide I have in this whole talk, by the way. Um, that's not going to be your whole reality as you move on with this. We can talk about that later, but for me to do basic Gutenberg development talk, this is all my PHP for today. Um, but this is very standard. We're just saying this thing depends on these three already registered scripts. They WP, so we can assume they're from core. WP blocks, WP I18, and WP element. Remember those three. Those are going to come up in a minute. Um, WP register style. Ours is dependent on WP blocks. It's the CSS for the blocks from core. Um, and then we're also going to do a separate one for the front end. And then down here, we're going to register block type. This is the one new PHP function we need to learn today. Is register block type. The name of the block, you'll notice that there's a slash here. Namespace, and then the actual type. So all of your blocks, if you're plugging this called Caldera Forms, all of your blocks would be Caldera hyphen form slash forms. Caldera hyphen form slash, you know, entries. 
they, it's a vendor's namespacing to avoid namespace collisions. Kind of like REST API <coughs> routes, you're supposed to register all your thing, all of your routes in a namespace. Um, Does it always use the plugin slug? It, it's WordPress, it's a convention. It will require you to, uh, it will require the slash. Should it be the slug that you use from WordPress.org? Yes, that's what I'm asking. I would argue that it should be. Is there a role that's going to be enforced on code level? No, but I think that that would be the correct way to do it and how I would do it. Um, and would recommend to you, in my opinion. Um, but we are saying here editor script, right? That one, editor style, style for front end. We could also do front end style or just stop your script here. And so we know that this, you know, there's a relationship here between this registration and this registration, and Gutenberg can kind of handle the rest for us in the background. Um, thus ends the PHP section of the uh, code, of the talk. Um, you're taking a picture of me, but did you make that one? Yeah. <laughs> so James and Vince here do uh, Wapoos, um, and uh, they make Wapoos, and so I went onto their site last night and went, ah, I need more Wapoos, and had the good poo. Um, but he was taking a photo of me when I came back, it was weird. Um, so that, that's all the PHP that we need today, um, because now we're all in JavaScript land, um, these three new JavaScript functions. wp.blocks.register block type defines a block type. Um, it's very similar to the PHP function we just looked at. Uh, has many of the same capabilities. Um, WP.i18n, WordPress has these translation functions. It's one of the strengths of the platform is that we can internationalize sites. Instead of just typing a string in our code, we put it in these translation functions, give it a text domain, and then however the translation system works, I don't really know, uh, it replaces all of the strings that it can with the local language. So, you write in that function, you know, hello, Calderaforms, and then somebody creates this translation package that has, hola, Calderaforms, this same line, and it figures out how to replace it. Somehow match it. So now we can do these in the JavaScript functions that work the same way. Um, wp.element.createElement is a JavaScript function that creates HTML elements. Um, and it is a wrapper around react.createElement. So, big question always comes on, hold on, what, I need to know React? No, you do not need to know React. Do you, if you know React, uh, this is going to help. Uh, but you don't need to have any experience with React. Um, most of this talk today, if you know like var equals and what a function is, you can get through this JavaScript. Um, so, let's go back through those three. We're gonna come back to all these topics. Um, Let's bring this into scope. You know, it's attached to WP. You can also use Webpack imports if you want. Um, we're going to do register block type, and you'll see again, namespace slash name. This has to be identical to how it was done with that PHP function. That's the unique link. Um, and again, namespace. And then the second argument is this object, uh, and that's like the code that makes your block. Uh, and we'll get to that one piece at a time. But just know this is the JavaScript function that takes this one string to identify the block, and then this object that we'll fill in in a minute that, you know, <coughs> makes the block a thing that has functions. Getting back to i18n, um, this lets us have this default function, text domain, which should be your plugin slug, right? If you're slash Caldera forms, it should be Caldera forms there. That's how WordPress.org works. Um, and this will get replaced if there is a uh, available string. And it used to be that we used, um, we used to be that we used WP localized script to use this, write a PHP version of this, and then like put it into a global scope, window scope object that then we hoped was there and had to do a bunch of validation on and then used to replace script. It just, and then you have to figure out how that works with state management. Like this is just getting boring. So, now WordPress does it in a more intelligent way. Is this only way. in 5, or is this already out? The, yeah, so this is a part of 5, but um, part, of, part of the ambition in Gutenberg is to have a lot of these types of utilities as NPM scripts. Um, so I believe this one is already in the WordPress NPM, uh, but 
yes, it's not in WordPress 4.9. But the idea is that you'll be able to rely on it in, in using NPM in your own plugins if you want to use it with backwards compatibility. It's just that like that's an ambitious stretch goal that is maybe less important than like the editor functionality and usability, right? Well, if they've got the editor, they're obviously using. Yeah. So, uh, but that is will allow us to use these types of new tools with backwards compatibility in mind, which is important. So let's go to um, WP Element Create Element. This, as I said, is a function that creates uh, HTML elements. So we're bringing it into scope at the top here, just so we have an easier, shorter way of referring to it. L creates elements, wp.element.createElement. And then what kind of element are we creating? We're creating a paragraph, so P. Um, what's the class? Uh, because we can't use class as a reserved word. In JavaScript, we can't say class, so we say class name. Which is how React works. I don't love it either. Um, and then we have our actual content, which in this case is just a string generated with that translation function. Um, that's weird. Um, this is a new thing. <coughs> Uh, for a lot of people if you're not into JavaScript. But, um, but let's look at kind of a side-by-side -side, uh, here. Um, this is a ULLI type thing, ordered list as you would say, on the right with HTML, and on the left what you would use to generate it with this create element. So if we wanted to put it into this variable list, um, UL is the type of the outermost one, the class name is inline list. Um, and then we have a JavaScript array that has uh, one of these um, that we said is an li. Well, it should have been an li, but we lost it in the copy paste. Um, list item, right? And so it has one child. And this starts to get a little clunky. Um, you're starting to wonder why um, we're going to do this. But um, we could start to write code to generate HTML, right? Uh, before we were just making it like syntactically different. Now we're able to use logic to generate HTML. Um, also, they're not really DOM, they're not really HTML elements. They're like the whole React synthetic DOM that's better at uh, you know right interacting and updating the screen than we are um, because they're Facebook and they spend a lot of money figuring out how to do it right. Um, and so, but we're able to say now. I have this outermost item, and then the inside is this list item, this array. So before I had one child in it, but I can have an infinite number. So now I'm just generating that. We switched over to ES6 syntax because arrow functions make JavaScript worth writing. Um, and we're pushing into this array these LIs. And as this, we start to write JavaScript code where the user interface is generated based on, you know, dynamic inputs. That can be the changes that are happening because people are clicking things in the browser, right? So this is a little bit more cumbersome than writing HTML, but we know that just writing HTML manually doesn't scale. If it was, if if it made sense to write websites just typing HTML, we wouldn't be here today. Right, like we wouldn't have need a WordPress. Right, that's a terrible way of doing business. Um, we have WordPress and Joomla and stuff. Uh, but you know, this becomes begins to pay off because this function can run whenever somebody types into a input, right, and changes what's here. So we can build interactive user interface without writing a ton of code. Uh, and we'll look at how to get there. Um, I am not a huge fan of writing code that way, um, to be honest. Um, the alter one alternative, there are many alternatives, is to uh, use JSX, um, which lets us write something that looks very similar to, um, to, to HTML. So this is the way we're showing on the bottom, this is the way we had at the top. Um, right, so this is, on the right, very little code that we had to do to show you know, this text, whereas we had to do all of this <clears throat> with the other way. So this takes more work to get set up, but like once you have that in a generator, like create Gutenberg does that for you, sets that all up. Um, 
that I think is a little bit similar. So J6 is built into the Gutenberg already? You will. So Gutenberg itself uses a mix of JSX and create element just whenever it's the best choice. Um, and so you can use both. And it's a Webpack configuration step to use Gutenberg's compiler to get JSX back to, you know, browser safe JavaScript that I can one of those two code links I showed in the beginning does, and also create Gutenberg automatically generates. So it's a little bit more build setup, but it, you know, it's not like you have to adapt it, it's done. Um, but one of the things that's great about uh, JSX is that you can just use your logic in the middle of your HTML um, if you want. And so in this case, we're just mapping this array. But remember that as this I'm getting very close to introducing the editable part, where these arrays are going to be whatever the current value is in the Gutenberg system. So we can have this list that's dynamically updating every time one of those values change. And because React is being used under the hood, it's really smart about when it's actually going to read data from the, screen, from the DOM model and when it's going to update the DOM model. Because the advance of React and Angular and Vue is that that's really hard to do efficiently um, and really sophisticated and like only really like Facebook and Google should be trusted to figure that out. Um, or the one guy who wrote uh, Vue, uh, Evan Yu, because <laughs> he's cool. Um, and uh, we can kind of offload that task. Um, and all this stuff becomes magic. Um, so to summarize, wp.element.createElement is react.createElement. And we can do it however we want, with JSX, with those render functions, with components, with React components, with WordPress create element components. We can use vanilla JavaScript. We can, I, one of the things I like to do is mount a Vue.js app there, because I like Vue.js. Up to you. But this magic of updating what the values are that we're working with and making the, you know, system you know, the website look the way it's supposed to look, it is now handled by WordPress, which is effectively React in this context. Um, so we have wp.element.component. If you're a React developer already, and you're used to using classes for your components, um, in doing, you know, class post extends react.component, you can do that. Um, or you can do React, you know, class post extends uh, wp.element.component. Um, it is React 16.3. something right now. Again, I do not speak with any authority, um, but the answer that I've gotten from people with authority is that, like, as long as there's a reason to upgrade React, WordPress Core will do that, but this is the backwards compatibility statement on WordPress 5.0 is like this is the WordPress API that right now I'm pointing out that it's compatible with React because there's a lot more documentation on react.component um, than there is on wordpress.element.component, right? So in the future, the, this is our WordPress API. Um, but right now it's functionally identical to this React API, which means that if you're having trouble understanding how wp.element.component works, you can go to the documentation for React for React.component, and you can go to like West Boss's course that must cover that in depth. Um, I can say with no certainty, with a lot of certainty. Um, you know, uh, he must go very in depth in that. Zach Gordon teaches on this stuff. All these React con concepts that you can learn or might already know apply, but you don't need to know it going in. So basically, you don't need React. It's great if you have it. You're going to learn it because you're going to learn WordPress. Let's look at a basic static block. This is basically a block that puts some HTML that has no configuration on the page. But remember when I showed register block type and I uh, said, like, there's the name and then there's this object and, like, now it's empty? Trust me. Like, we're getting back to that because um, that's a lot. That's, before we even get there, we need to bring those other things into scope. Then we need to give it its title, its icon, its category, its keywords, its edit callback, its save callback, attributes, 
Um, prizes for anybody who mentioned something I left off here. There's a big one I didn't put on this list. Delete. No, but um, um, supports is a good one. Whether or not it supports HTML or not. So supports HTML is something that we'll actually add later. Um, there's a couple more here, um, but these are the key ones. What would that mean to support HTML in an HTML block? Yeah, well, whether or not it allows you to save, because remember, some of them use Metastore. Whether or not you're allowed to edit the HTML inside of it. Oh, okay. Okay. So, but let's let's back up a second here. We already saw these three functions. We saw the PHP code to put them in. <coughs> oh, 10 minutes. Plus another hour. Oh, we do have another hour. Okay, cool. So I am not 10 minutes from being done, but we have like this open Gutenberg hack lab. Your call, your room in 10 minutes. Do you want me to like speed through this or do you want me to just keep going? Keep going. Keep going. Okay, cool. Um, thank you, James. Um, so, register block type here. We're just bringing that into scope like we saw. And we've used the PHP code before we showed how to, um, you know, how to load those up. So that way they're part of the dependencies, right? So now we have our translation functions. We have this create element. Um, remember, I showed this slide and I said we're going to fill stuff into this JavaScript object. That's what we're doing right now. Let's look at little pieces that we're putting in there. Um, the title, right? That's in that little block inserter thing that popped up. What's it going to show up as, right? What's its title going to be? And also, that's one of the ways that we'll be able to surface it through text search. <coughs> Um, there are other ways. Um, there is an icon that also refers, that represents it. Um, it can be any dash icon, <coughs> or it can be, we can pass a variable that is an SVG uh, to make the up. Um, and I think there's a way to pass a path to an SVG, but I think that has to be done in the PHP side. I can't remember. It's talking with it. Um, but all the dash icons that are, right, this is just the dash icon site, or wordpress.org, all of those Choose one, smiley, whatever. Um, categories, there are five categories. You can be in every block and have exactly one category. Um, so that's another way to show up in search. <coughs> you can have as many keywords as you want. There might be a limit, I don't know. There should be a limit. Um, I'm a plugin developer. I definitely, when it was allowed, stuffed all those keywords in there. Like that was like the easiest way to up your rankings. Um, and like it was well documented, they changed that, now we do that. I think that this is a system that, um, if it's three to five, will be great. Um, but you can just have keywords there, social, you know, share things, that kind of stuff. Um, this is the edit callback. Before we were looking at using this function to create HTML elements, why do we need to create HTML elements? Well, because HTML is what makes an edit interface. So this is a very basic block that doesn't really have an edit interface. So it's just creating that HTML. But what you'll see is that this function has props, and one of them is class name. So that's the class that Gutenberg uses to know that this block is that block. Right, this HTML represents that block. How that works, we can nerd out later about how that works. I don't care. That's all you need to do to have that relationship. That's what's on you as a developer. That's your responsibility. Gutenberg will kind of do the rest magically. Um, <coughs> And extensively, there are filters here. Um, and then the save puts HTML into the post content, where the block goes. Um, this is totally optional, by the way. Um, you can just return null here and not have it, um, and it'll handle the serialization for you. Or if you're using meta storage, you don't need it. Uh, you know, if you're storing your block attributes, which we'll get to. Um, so this is optional. But our props comes in, props class name, same thing. So this, we are saving this HTML here and we're putting this class name, you know, this HTML class, the same way that we did in the previous slide, right? This looks identical, because it is, you know, cut and paste. Um, and the, that's all I'm responsible for as the developer, for Gutenberg to know that this is that block. Does that make sense? That that class, which we're creating with this, that's the whole relationship. So, WPCLI can accomplish the, everything we've covered so far, the command line tool for WordPress, in like two commands. Um, WP Scaffold plugin, uh, this is WP Scaffold is a um, package for WPCLI. 
uh, we can make a plugin, um, create a plugin files, and then we can do a WP scaffold block. Um, you can read the documentation, but everything I've covered so far, uh, the command line tool for WordPress, if you have it installed, will do. Um, and now you have your block. So all of that stuff you need to know, um, the lineage of that code is basically Brian and I were working on something, we hit the command, we edited it, we used it for something. Um, we reused it for that talk, it's been reused, but it's all coming from these commands. This is that simple with WP CLI, um, but if you are a JavaScript developer who expects Webpack and stuff like that, you're not gonna get it this way. Um, there's another. Um, and then we have this one line of PHP to like include that file. Cool? Um, if you know WP CLI, this should be exciting to you. If you don't, that's cool. Come back to it later, it's helpful. Um, let's make the block editable, right? Because that was just putting, a, that was a really complex way to put HTML um, into the post content. Um, and I don't think we saw all of the benefit there. Um, but the blocks that I showed you um, had interfaces where we could save things in them and make them dynamic and stuff. Um, so now we're going to include wp.blocks.rich text. This is that WYSIWYG editor that you would see. It powers the, uh, the, um, it powers the, um, you know, the paragraph editor. That stuff. Well, we're just going to use it to create our message. Um, and then attributes. This is the, what, you know, what is the data of the block? Um, we're going to have a change function to update that value in the attributes. Um, and then we're going to use the props through the save function. And this is going to make our block actually editable. So, you know, we're not just pre-coded HTML. Um, so this is the new concept here is block attributes. This is the editable data for a block. This block has one attribute called message. That is the message that it gives. This is, you know, in the example code, this is the uh, notice plugin. You know, it adds a notice. Um, what is the notice? It's this one attribute. Um, so we can have them save as an HTML comment. This is where WordPress, in the save callback, we just return null, and it puts it into comments that are removed from the content before it is displayed and used to create the blocks. Um, and this is great for, for blocks that use server-side rendering. So if you have a short code right now in your plugin, and it has some attributes that people can type in, you can create a block that has exactly the same attributes as your short code and use a PHP render callback to create the HD, you know, render callback when you use register block type and just hook that up to the same function that worked with short code. So now you have one function that's serving short codes for compat backwards compatibility and blocks for the future. Um, but this is the minimum to say this block has an attribute called post ID that's always going to be a number. This is going to go in attributes in register block type. Um, we'll, we'll slot it in in a second. Um, we can also have them be represented in the HTML markup. So one of these ideals is that we will have very clean semantic HTML that works on its own, and then we'll put some JavaScript and CSS on it to progressively enhance it. But it works without, you know, if we're talking about an assistive device that or a low you know, a bot, you know, crawler for a web uh, search that doesn't have JavaScript enable or has low bandwidth. We can support that. Um, so this is going to take the text of the element that has the class my hyphen block hyphen content, right? That looks just like jQuery or like MooTools or something. Um, there, that selector, uh, selenium, anything. Um, then we can also save attributes in the database as post meta because sometimes we want to query for them. Uh, we want to change them, you know, we want to use them as MySQL. Um, and so we can say this one's text, it has the source meta, and that's the name of the meta key. Um, and we do need to register this um, with register meta, the PHP function, and make it show in REST true, because Gutenberg is using the REST API to, serve to read and write this data. So this meta key must be a public meta key when it's registered. So when you use register meta, we're saying the name of meta key, 
right? This is a pre-existing function where you expose it on the REST API or not, right? Because by default, when you have a meta key in the database, WordPress doesn't just let it be uh, exposed by the REST API. You have to opt into that with register meta. You would have had to do that for this, where it won't. Um, so inside of register uh, block type, we do have attributes, right, as an option, just like we had title, edit. Um, and this one is going to create this message for this notice block. And because it is, we're going to use this um, paragraph block that can have many paragraphs, they're going to be arrays, but they're all going to have this good and dev notice class. Um, like, so it can be multiples. It's not one, it's an array, it's a set. Um, set attributes is the function that is used to update the value of your attributes. So you have this message attribute, and then you have a text input where people type in the new value. When that, ch when that text input changes, you will need to have call a function to say the message is now this. So here is our new edit callback. Um, where we've replaced here, we used to just have a static string. Now we have this rich text component, and we are passing in props.attributes.message. That's the value. And then every time it changes, on change, we use on change message, which passes props. which passes this new value to set attributes. So it sets the attribute message to whatever the new value of this input is. In React, we have this concept of properties flow down. So Gutenberg is providing the attributes, current value, props.attributes. We use down here props.attributes.message. And we tell Gutenberg to change it to something else using props.setAttributes. And then this object literal message, we could update more attributes at once. And then this new value. Our save callback, basically identical except for we're using props.attributes.message to persist just that one value there instead of the string. Before it just saved one string. Now it saves whatever the value is set in that input. Um, that kind of brings me to the end because that's that relationship of how we can have these attributes, tell Gutenberg what they are, have an interface for them, and then persist that back to HTML. That's it. That's the basics. This goes a lot deeper. Um, I went over time and I still didn't teach you everything you needed to know. Um, I have no regrets. Um, <laughs> so you should learn more, right? There's a lot of stuff here. Um, you should learn how to use like render callbacks to use PHP. But you can just save HTML. You can save something that's going to cause JavaScript to happen in the front end. You can use PHP to do you know, the way you always did it in the past. Up to you. Look into that. Using JSX, again, I think is really helpful. Um, there's a focus property that I think is now called is selected, props.isSelected, that in that block will be true when somebody is clicked on that. So if you want to update what it does, or you know, bring in sidebar controls, that little thing that pops up, only when it's become active, that's what you can do. Um, when I was showing like the text paragraph block had the stuff on the side. Those are inspector controls. You can use this component, um, inspector controls. Um, look in the handbook for an example. And uh, plugin sidebars don't relate to a block. They just relate to a plugin. So um, that's one place that things that used to go in meta boxes might go. Um, you know, global settings for the post. Um, so they, is that new? Because the last I looked at it, there wasn't anything for global meta. Yeah. So um, plugin sidebars are still experimental, but they're been there for a few releases and seem to be pretty good and stable, um, but they are not finalized. But I think they're the, the, the problems in the early years. They decided to go that route rather yeah. than the static block well, concept that they were looking at. So some things that used to be metadata do belong to post content, right? And so it kind of makes sense to have a block that's fixed there, especially if you're using templates that for like SEO. Or yeah. Something like that. But there are other things that aren't post content and just go in there. So you can use a traditional meta box, but that's boring. Yoast is here. Yeah. Or you can register a plugin sidebar. It's just that that API is not totally finished, but it's almost finished. 
Um, so I'd, re I'd recommend learning that in like two weeks. Um, dynamic blocks where you're using, um, you know, I want the five latest posts. I want the seven reviews of this uh, product, right? So you can make a REST API request to this site or some other site based on those settings, building those kind of things. And then higher order components is a concept in React um, that makes it easy to have a very simple component that just shows you know, a product, a post, a review, um, and then wrap it up in a more complex component that does stuff like query the database via the REST API. Um, and therefore, you can test that one part of it independently of the larger system. Um, and WordPress provides these higher order components. For example, with API data is a higher order component that gives API data from the WordPress REST API. Um, with spoken messages, uses the wp.a11y speak API to speak screen reader messages in real time. Um, which, you know, making that easier to do is great for everybody. Um, and a lot of the stuff in Gutenberg kind of automatically does that. But when you need your own custom thing, you have that. Um, so, uh, I said before, WPCLI, it's the command line tool for WordPress, has very basic stuff and has an open issue for more complex block generation. Uh, Oh, a model A has created create Gutenberg, which is similar to create React app. Create React app is one command, tell, you, tell it the name and you have a React app. All the like, best stuff that you need for React development there. Um, create Gutenberg is a one command, create Gutenberg, what's the block name? All the best stuff for WordPress block development there. Um, and it's very similar to what create React is. Uh, okay. So um, I also gave a more advanced topic version of this talk at WordCamp Miami. Uh, Brian did the basic version I followed up. Um, those are my slides for it. Um, again, the slides for this you can download. The Gutenberg Handbook um, is a very good resource on a lot of stuff. Um, it is also based out of the source code. You go to GitHub and you go to WordPress, GitHub, and then to the docs directory. That's where the handbook comes from. So if you um, know more than the handbook, uh, share what you've learned. Uh, documentation is a community project. Um, and when you browse, not what you download from WordPress.org, but what you get on GitHub, a lot of the code has a README file. So like the blocks, uh, most of the blocks are getting like, if you go to the rich editor, the source code for that, where you see the JavaScript, the CSS, the tests, there's also a README file about how to use the rich text component. Um, so read the source, always. Um, this, there is on WordPress.org, uh, GitHub, there's a bunch of example code that we've worked on um, for um, a thing that's coming soon. Gutenberg boilerplate by a mod again. Um, uh, just more example basic blocks you can look at. Um, the um, Jazak Gordon's Gutenberg course um, is video courses, super in depth. Um, definitely worth looking at. Guten Kit, Rich Tabor, who does um, theme development more, has done some really cool blocks that you can look at and educational content that goes with that. Um, Thank you. A lot of people showed up, and we had a pretty low attrition rate. Good churn is important. Um, it's interesting. It means a lot that everybody came out. Um, I don't know how much time we have. I don't know how sick you are of hearing my voice. Um, but you can get these slides and get all those links. Um, Gutenberg Hack Lab, uh, what do we want to do? I can make some suggestions. Um, we can, like, answer questions. Templates. Templates. I was going to say, can't you like, do the pre-made block layout? Yeah. Actually? So we can take like feature requests, um, or I can look at some code that I'm working on. That's a good example. We can look at something that other people here wanted to build. We can all just kind of like break up into a little, you know, and go and try this. Um, I have a couple of questions. Yeah, why don't we do questions for a bit? Uh, so you've got the, the PHP side, register block types, and the yes. JavaScript side. Do you need to call them both? Um, or can they be used in a change of No, but yes. Okay. Um, is the short answer. Okay. Um, and not settled. Because surfacing this data on both sides is like the wicked problem of PHP JavaScript, yeah. and you know, we're not using Node on the server, so we just have to deal with it. Um, and uh, <coughs> there's you can register attributes on the server side. And if you're doing the, like, I'm replacing my short code style, you probably want to do that. Okay. Or if you're, like, maybe using an object-oriented system for creating your box dynamically, 
that might be easier to do, especially with you know database access. Um, you know, secured information that's only available on the server. Um, you might want to do that with PHP. So you would use register block type and um, you know, if you're going to use meta for your storage, you need to at least you need to kind of put those two okay. pieces of registration. You probably want to use functions that represent the data consistently. Um, but you do not have to use both. Okay. And if you <coughs> you're really your minimum with the PHP side is just to say it exists mm -hmm. and have for some way have P, have JavaScript file exists, okay. right? The preferable standard way being that registration step. Okay. But it's WordPress, you know, please follow the rules. <laughs> Nobody's going to uh, people will say bad things about you, but nobody can stop. That kind of links to my second question is you've got the um, the attribute storage and the meta storage. Can you talk about when you would want to use uh, one over the other? Yeah. So or the HTML storage, HTML meta. I would love to use both, and that's something I've been scheming on, um, because I think there is a huge benefit to having it where it's just in H where HTML just looks the way that it is, and it has a consistent markup, right? Um, in the, that alert block plugin that I had, you'll see that I'm setting the classes using keys of a uh, object literal, so that way there's one true source of like class name, and therefore the HTML structure will be consistent and um, I don't know anything about CSS for design because, right, like I shouldn't be allowed to do that. Um, but the, uh, I know that if I'm consistent about these things, that will make designers happy and that will make SEO people happy. Um, and so uh, that's another advantage to doing kind of JavaScript land is that you can define it there. So my answer is, I don't know what you're doing. And with meta storage, you can query the database for it, right? You can't do it, right? I need, I would like to say you can't say I need all the posts where like there's this one HTML thing, but like I've written that script that's, you know, got in every post and like scraped it for the shortcode rejects, right? Like this is stupid. Let's stop doing that. We now have this system. That's the one true system for. It. And that's what these block attributes are. Um in when you in Gutenberg in the top right, you have those three dots. And you can switch it over to HTML mode and code mode. And it's a pain in the ass to look at, but it helps you conceptualize it as a developer. Because that's kind of a weird thing. This whole concept of attributes and how they relate to HTML is weird. You should take a minute. Um, like I was lucky, like Zach Gordon showed me, you know, because he was figuring it out. And like, it's weird, but it's super powerful, it's super neat, and it's an opportunity in WordPress to say now meta fields or whatever fields have rules, <coughs> which you know, it's good for Burger. Did I cut? Not answer your actual question. I feel like you were asking about templates. Uh, uh, well. My question about templates might be answered by the new plugin sidebar, which didn't exist last time I was looking at this. Are you talking about page templates or like no? That um, like for instance, I mean, obviously, I'm trying to figure out how to use this conceptually for Pop Up Maker. Yeah. Ninety percent of the data we're storing is like how how you trigger it, where it's positioned. Then none okay. of that is block data. Yeah. So that's why I've been trying to figure out. And one thing, one thing that was suggested at WordCamp US, and this is before the plugin sidebar existed, I think. Yep. was that they were coming out with nested templates. So you could basically have a template block that had an editable area at the top, which would then have a nested template where they could build their own layouts, and then yep. you'd have a block that they couldn't move at the bottom. When you do register post type, you can, um, there is a uh, now an, argu an optional argument for register post type called <laughs> template, mm -hmm. where you can set an array of blocks where they can be nested. Um, and then you can, there's like a global lock called lock. And if it's locked, that, that's the thing that can't be modified. And if it's not, then it's optional. And um, there are open tickets about the fact that that's not good enough, right? So um, you need so to be able to say these blocks are... Would be you'd be able to lock the, the top level template, but unlock the, the nested template yeah. that you can edit inside So there. right now the API is incomplete for that kind of stuff, but yeah, there's an understanding that that's a need. Um, so it's, it's kind of my choice whether I use the plugin sidebar or the nested. Yeah. It, right, and then the other thing is, is that um, you have settings in your plugin that just have nothing to do with content. Right. Uh, you know, like rules on like when does it expire? Right. Like they show this pop up. Uh, you know, this date range. Right. I assume it's a feature. I mean, I mean, 
in a minute, but um, yeah, there is a whole <laughs> right. slew of settings that, that have kind of nothing stuff to do with the display. Has nothing to do with display. A plug-in sidebar is probably the solution there. Um, I don't know how it's going to work with full. You know, if you could go the whole way the out. Second or question would be. I don't know. Are do you have to use their own field APIs to use those, or can I render my own? Because we just went through a whole rewrite to build something maintainable and simple. Okay, so you can you if you have a job if you have a meta box. It's JavaScript rendered tabs and everything else. Yeah, it will still render right. Like in that video, I don't know if I scroll down the whole way to Yoast, but Yoast was just there. Right, so the same old thing was there. I mean, it works fine. Now, whether or not it's going to save the same way, they've gone through a lot of lengths to be backwards compatible, you should test it. But there is, when you go to the Metaboxes section Ajax, yeah. of the template uh, of the handbook, it explains this kind of path where you can mark your Metabox as just for backwards compatibility. You can mark it as incompatible, which would cause that post type to divert to classic. Um, or you can just say like this should, is the one that we you just leave it be and just let it be that like there's no reason to change if it works so test it and see if it works and then decide is it going to benefit you as a developer is it going to benefit your users as users to make the change right right is it worth it well, I'm definitely looking forward to being able to like compose pre-made layouts yeah. like putting a subscription form and a list and a title yeah. but the other thing is and I showed this with that editable component. Instead of coming up with your own rich text Starters editor, is what I was use that. At. Instead of looking using your own coming up with a number input. And when I say a number input, I mean the HTML that surrounds it and the label and the description and the ARIA tags to make those associations in the right accessible way. That used to be a thing that we had to you know come up with our own system for. Right? I've got a form builder, right? This is yeah, my life. Yeah, don't mind. And, but instead you can use the Gutenberg component called text input. And one of the properties is label. And if you do that, it'll create the right, you know, for ID relationship. And if you use the description, it'll put out a paragraph that has an ID that's, that's ARIA, you know, ARIA described by on I'd the I'd say input. my form builder is probably more advanced than theirs. Honestly, we have field dependency oh. and everything already built in. So use this. your yeah. thing. Yeah. But I'm saying because there are other people in the room that this is the opportunity to have the one Absolutely. true WordPress way. But and if you're outputting your settings with HTML, stop it. Right. Stop it move to something like this because you're literally, if you want to add a new setting in, or in my new method or in this, you literally add a new PHP array key that names the setting, the type of field, the label and the description, and boom, it's automatic, the rest handles, yeah, you don't do the old way, it's not relevant. Oh yeah, that's, I'm halfway there. Um, but we're just going to use Gutenberg for a lot of the stuff because WordPress has the, this has this framework, this is where I started where I said it's a UI framework. Um, it, I would say that because it delivers this one end result, but I can use that one little piece. If I just want the way that cool little uh, component that for links, that's called URL. That's wp.blocks.components, wp.components. I don't know. Look at the handbook. Actually, wp links is the access. So yeah. So, um, but it's literally that input that does the search automatically for posts. And if I want to modify its behavior, I can extend it. Um, and nobody's telling me I have to use that, but why shouldn't I? Somebody else who's better at this than me, uh, about design it. Uh, and my and user they're going to maintain the backward compatibility and the styling and, right. and do the accessibility and audits. Accessibility, yep. Why not? Like, why make my life harder? Right? And the answer is sometimes it's worth it. I don't know that it's going to continue to be worth it to develop those kind of custom solutions like you did in the past because you had. Um, I really don't want to keep talking for more than an hour. Um, I could we um, I, I could literally start looking at code. I just need to like get a little bit more water because um, we have about an hour. Do you mind? I appreciate it. Can we take a survey of who's in the room? JavaScript familiarity. 